He always does. All right, gentlemen. Let's get on with it. Which of us will write our Declaration of Independence? Mr. Adams, I say you should write it. To your legal mind and brilliance we defer. Is that so? Well, if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. I'm obnoxious and disliked. You know that's so. Uh... Yes, I know. But I say you should write it. Franklin, yes, you. Hell no! Yes, you, Dr. Franklin, you! But, you! But, you! But! Mr. Adams, but Mr. Adams, the things I write are only light extemporanea. I won't put politics on paper, it's a mania! So I refuse to use the pen in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania! Pennsylvania! Mr. Sherman, I say you should write it. You are never controversial as it were. That is true. Whereas if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. I'm obnoxious and disliked, you know that, sir. Yes, I do. So I say you should write it. Roger, yes, you. Good heavens, no. Yes, you, Roger Sherman. You, but, you, but, you, but. Mr. Adams. But, Mr. Adams, I cannot write with any style or proper etiquette. I don't know a participle from a predicate. I am just a simple cobbler from Connecticut. Connecticut, Connecticut, a simple cobbler. Mr. Livingston, maybe you should write it. You have many friends and you're a diplomat. Oh, that word. Whereas if I'm the one to do it, they'll run their quill pens through it. He's obnoxious and disliked. Did you know that? I hadn't heard. So I say you should write it. Robert, yes, you. Not me, Johnny. Yes, you, Robert Livingston. You, but, you, but, you. But. Mr. Adams, dear Mr. Adams, I've been presented with a new son by the noble stork, so I am going home to celebrate and pop the cork with all the Livingstons to gather back in old New York. New York, New York, Livingston's going to pop a cork. Mr. Adams, leave me alone! Mr. Jefferson. Mr. Adams, I beg of you, I've not seen my wife these past six months. And we solemnly declare that we will preserve our liberties, being with one mind resolved to die free men rather than to live slaves. Thomas Jefferson, on the necessity of taking up arms, 1775, magnificent. Why, you write ten times better than any man in Congress, including me. For a man of only 33 years, you possess a happy talent for composition and a remarkable felicity of expression. Now then, sir, will you be a patriot or a lover? A lover. No. But I burn, Mr. A. So do I, Mr. J. You? You do? John, sure. who'd have thought it? Mr. Jefferson, dear Mr. Jefferson, I'm only 41, I still have my virility. And I can romp through Cupid's Grove with great agility. But life is more than sexual combustibility. Jefferson, stop right there. Combustibility! Combustibility! Quiet! 
Now, you'll write it, Mr. J. Who will make me, Mr. A? I. You? Yes. How? By physical force, if necessary. It's your duty, damn it. Your duty. Mr. Adams. Damn you, Mr. Adams. You're obnoxious and disliked. That cannot be denied. Once again, you stand between me and my lovely bride. Lovely bride. Oh, Mr. Adams, you are driving me to homicide. Jefferson, homicide. stop right there. Homicide. The decision is yours, Mr. Jefferson. Do as you like with it.